Times change, and we change with them. With the great changes of the past few years, the farmer has come to depend more and more on the payments which he has received for his woods products. He now recognizes the importance of trees as crops. In the schools, a new generation of farmers is learning that there is money in trees, learning how to take better care of trees in order to get more money out of them learning how the pines of the South can be made to bring prosperity. The income from woods products puts them in the top ranks of Southern farm crops. The markets for woods products are numerous and increasing. A generation ago, it was thought that paper could not be made from Southern pines. Now, to each of the many pulp and paper mills, which have been built in the South, enormous quantities of pine pulpwood are hauled every day. Some goes by trucks, direct from the woods to the mill. From more distant places, it is brought to railroads, which carry it to the mill. From still other places, it is brought in by barges. After the wood reaches the mill, it is churned through huge revolving drums to remove the bark. Stripped of bark, it falls onto an endless conveyor, which carries it into the mill, where a giant chipping machine cuts it to bits in a few seconds, after which the chips are run over shaker screens to get just the right sizes for making pulp. In this great storage pile, only 10 days output of a large mill, there are 6,400 tons of pulp. Great as is the demand for pulp wood, even more wood is needed for saw logs. The lumber industry, the first industry to be developed in the new world, is still going strong. It consumes a large part of our forest output for making boards and other products to fill the thousand and one everyday needs of man. Another market for woods products is that for poles and piling. One has only to think of the countless number of telephone, telegraph, and power line poles which carry the millions of miles of communication and transmission wires in the country to realize that there is a great use for woods products both for new lines and for replacements. In many places, certain kinds of pine trees, which later will be cut for pulp wood or for timber, provide farmers an income from turpentining. Everyone is familiar with the stills, where the crude gum from the pines of the south is refined to turpentine and rosin, where the picturesque charge of rosin steams forth into vats covered with strainers to remove the dirt, needles, and twigs, and is then ladled into barrels. Less familiar is the modern still, where the rosin flows from the vats into five ply craft paper bags made from pine, each holding exactly 100 pounds. Each bag is sealed by stitching on a specially designed sewing machine. Ties, barrel staves, laths, and box shooks are a few of the many other common uses which maintain the market for the pines of the southern farmer. While the use of wood for making rayon is an example of the prospects for an ever-widening market.
is not alone from the sale of his woodland products that the farmer profits. He profits from the direct use which he has for them in everyday life on the farm. The fire in the kitchen stove and in the fireplace would cost a farmer real money if he had to buy the fuel. From the wood on his own land, he can make the shingles to repair his roof or to build a new one. Or he may fashion the logs with which to build a fine new tobacco barn to help add to his income from another crop. And he can cut the fuel with which to feed the fires that cure the tobacco, or the posts with which to fence his fields and woods. With such splendid opportunities for getting an income and for saving expenses through the proper management of his woods, it is not surprising that the farmer is seeking ways to increase his crop of trees, and that he has found the first and most important way to do this is to keep fire out of his woods, for fire is the greatest destroyer of profit from trees. Let's go out in the woods and see what happens when they are burned. See just why it is that the fire is burning forest dollars. In the first place, to say nothing of the hidden seeds, there are the baby seedlings, so tiny that one can hardly see them. They are the forest's future. Without them, the woods are doomed to pass away. The flames which burn the cover of the forest floor are devouring future profits leaving in their place ashes of poverty. These seedlings, in an area which has been protected several years, have gotten a fine start. If by chance fire occurs where the seedlings are larger, it often snuffs out their life. This sets at naught still more of the work which nature has done to help the farmer to get more profit from his woodland crop. One has only to compare lands which have been burned with those which have been protected from fire to see the tremendous loss which results from burning woods. Here, the seeds from the few scattered large trees have never had a chance because the land has been burned every year. Here, on the other hand, is a similar tract on which the seeds from the large trees have been given a chance to grow into thriving young trees by protecting the land from fire. But this is not all. Fire injures and sometimes kills the larger trees. The injured trees, like injured people, consume their strength in the struggle to get well. Their growth is slowed up for years. Fire, moreover, sets the stage for insects to attack trees. When such trees are brought to a lumber mill, the damage which fires have done to their butts causes a serious loss to the farmer, for it is damage to the most valuable part of the tree. Often, when such trees are felled, they are jump-butted, the damaged portions not even being sent to the mill. It means a serious loss. Here is a pile of 57 such butts. If they had not been damaged by fire, they would have made enough lumber to build a small farmhouse. Examine the end of one of the butts. It tells the story of the terrific havoc fire has wrought. At the pulp mill, to which the farmer hauls his pulpwood, 
A similar loss is in store for him if he has brought in any charred logs. The inspector measures the load, spots the burned logs, and refuses to accept them. To the young farmer, who may not be familiar with pulpwood requirements, the inspector hands a copy of the specifications, which say that charred logs will be rejected. Foreign material in gum from burned faces may degrade the rosin one to three grades, causing another cash loss to the farmer. The wise farmer values his tree crop and uses every precaution to prevent woods fires. If, for example, he wishes to clear new ground for pasture or for other crops, he piles the brush and debris a safe distance from the woods and plows a fire break next to the woods before he burns the brush. He also stations men along the edge of the woods to make sure that with shifting wind, no sparks or embers will set fire to the woods. He lets his neighbors and the local fire warden know that he intends to burn the brush. And where the law requires, he obtains a permit from the proper authorities. The farmer knows that plowing a fire break is good insurance. It is something that he can do before a possible fire breaks out, something which may save him from great loss. This farmer, for example, is plowing a 12-foot fire break along his fence. In this case, the protected area is an abandoned field in which natural slash pine trees are getting a good start and may be seen above the sedge grass. Other farmers have found that effective fire breaks can be made by plowing strips and planting them to carpet grass. The carpet grass keeps out wire grass, bushes, and other hazardous growths, and at the same time provides good pasturage for cattle. If, in spite of all precautions, a fire breaks out, every minute counts in getting to it. This farmer, while plowing, sees smoke coming from his woods. There is no organized protection established here, and he must act for himself. Calling to his two sons who are hoeing in a nearby field, he runs to the fire. Fortunately, they reach the fire while it is still small. The three of them fight the fire and fight it for what it is, a dangerous enemy. By prompt action and efficient firefighting, they have prevented what might have been a serious loss. They have fought well, so well, in fact, that when neighbors arrive to help, only the mopping up is left to be done. Neighbors help each other fight fires, not only because of goodwill, but also because they're fighting in a common cause. Every farmer knows that someday he may need his neighbor's help. This community of interests is leading farmers and woods owners in many parts of the South to join together to cooperate with county, state, and federal agencies in setting up organized fire detection and firefighting units. To keep losses at a minimum, means must be provided to locate fires when they start. Tall towers are erected, from which watchmen constantly scan the woods to detect the first sign of fire. The watchman in one tower, sighting a fire, telephones its direction from his tower to a central dispatcher, who also gets its direction by telephone from another tower. office is a large map with strings hanging from the locations of the towers. By stretching the strings from the two towers in the directions given by the watchman, the dispatcher finds the location of the fire at the point where the strings cross. He then communicates with a fire truck crew, in this particular case by radio, and the crew hastens to the fire. At the scene of the fire, the trained crew, with modern tools and equipment, quickly gets into action. 
The methods used in putting out fires depend on the conditions the fighters find when they reach the scene. In this case, some of the men are beating the fire with fire swatters. Others are using streams of water from backpack pumps, which have double nozzles that will throw either a full stream or a fine spray to beat down the fire. Still other men are handling the long hose, which comes from the motor-driven pump and large water tank on the truck. The most effective way of fighting fires in places where it is possible to get the truck near the fire. Due to its advantages, many sections of the South have organized protection. Besides the national forests, the black areas on the map, more than one-third of the private forests are being given protection by local state forestry organizations using funds supplied by landowners, counties, state appropriations, and the federal government under the provisions of the Clark-McNary Bill. They are the gray areas on the map. The remaining private forest lands shown in white still lack protection. But even where the state forestry organization has trained men and modern equipment for detecting and fighting fires, it is necessary for local farmers and woods owners to give their wholehearted cooperation. First, in preventing fires from starting. Second, in helping to fight them. And third, in helping enforce local fire law. It was a proud moment for this farmer when he was selected by the state forester as a volunteer fire guard. And the district forester drove up in a fire truck to present him with an honorary fire warden certificate. A proud moment too for his dear old mother. Over 16,000 southern farmers have received such state appointments and have pledged themselves to protect their own woods and, if necessary, give voluntary help to their neighbors and to the state fire protection organization. The great reward for keeping fires out of woods comes in the increasing welfare of the farmer and of the community. Throughout the entire south, pines grow very rapidly. Their values increase like money at compound interest. And as their values increase, the farms become more valuable and the owners more prosperous. When the farmer markets his woods products, he is profiting from the years of protection which have made them saleable. He is cashing in on good judgment, benefiting himself, his family, and the whole community. Perhaps on a day when he is to be paid for a week's deliveries of pulp wood, he takes his wife to town with him on the truck. After unloading his truck, he returns to the office at the entrance to the yard and receives his check. After going to the bank to deposit part of the money, they stop at a store where the wife buys needed supplies. Thus the pines, which bring income to the farmer, supply raw materials to mills that pay wages to large numbers of men, and directly or indirectly, help everyone in the community. So it is that to the farmer, fire-protected woods increase the value and the income of his farm. They will help him do the things he longs to do. These little trees are growing wealth. They may mean a college education and opportunity for the child. They may mean security for the farmer and his wife in their later years. They are the children of trees, and their growth brings happiness. To protect woods from fires is the most important of the pine ways to profit.